In the comments today, somebody was asking me about converters and their influence on the uh, uh, pro audio industry. And I think it really came into play with the 888 uh, digit design interfaces uh, uh, when they were out and the Apogee came out with the AD8000. It was day and night difference and I sold gobs and gobs of those things. And at, at that point, Apogee kind of had a leg up because he had the code to make the Apogee interface work with Pro Tools. And App, um, uh, Digit Design never released that code to any third party company for them to make their interfaces work. So if you wanted your interface to work, you had to reverse engineer things, which meant that if uh, Digit Design changed something in Pro Tools, your interface could not be working and then you'd have to scramble to make it work. And I, I saw that happen a few times, um, but that's where Apogee got the leg up. And then after that, it was, uh, you know, they, uh, Digit Design came out with the 192s and the HD, uh, the HD interfaces. And a lot of people were just buying those because they worked and they didn't have to worry about it. And if they wanted other converters, uh, like I saw uh, the Dave Matthews Band, they bought a bunch of digital interfaces and plugged other uh, AD converters and DA converters into those digital interfaces that DigiDesign made. So it made sure it worked all the time. But since then they came out with, uh, was it DAD, uh, Burl, uh, App, uh, Antelope. Uh, I mean, there's so many converters that are out there now. Um, and they, they've gotten just a little better or a little bit different than the ones that were out there before. So I don't think it's such a big deal with the converters as it used to be. I mean, like I said, day and night difference. And and it was the easiest sale that I ever made, just going into a studio with an 88,000, plug it in where their eight, uh, 888 was and let them listen to it. And they would go, wow. I mean, it's in the comments, a guy was saying, you know, it's like taking a, a blanket off the, the speakers. And, and he says it's a cliche, but... It truly was that way. It was smooth and and it sounded exactly like the, what you recorded. I remember being over at the Eric Bazilian's house uh, from the Hooters and and we recorded into the uh, 888 and then we recorded into the Apogee and we listened to the, the source too and big, big difference right there. The other thing too that a lot of people don't realize is the difference between 44.1 sampling rate and 96K, uh, a lot of people think that there, there's not really much of a difference, but there is if you if you sit and you listen. The problem is, is where do you listen to 96K files? But that's slowly not being an issue because the internet can send big files around and, and people can play back 96K files. So hopefully people that had the capabilities of mixing down to 96K, they did that and um, kept them for the future. So that's my little uh, two cents on what, what's going on with the converters. I think they've gotten better and better, but it's kind of they, they've gotten to a point where they're only getting a tiny little bit better. And, and it's kind of subjective if it's better or if it's just different. So there you go.